Good evening. Wow, we have a full house. This is so wonderful. Um, I'm Eva Stevens. I'm the head of the Fashion Studies Department. Um, you are going to see a fantastic show tonight. It will be filled with um, over 100 pieces of, of clothing, so it will be jam-packed. Um, we have classes from beginning sewing, where people have never even uh, touched a sewing machine, all the way to um, our senior designers, who have been here for two years, who have completed beautiful um, groups. Uh, that you'll get to see. It is really something to watch um, the transition between the two. Um, everybody who is in the show has done a ton of work to get this for you. So at the very end of the show, you'll get to see all of us come out on the runway. Um, we have about at least 160 people um, who are part of it, most of them studi uh, students. So our fashion show is run by students. It's modeled by students. Everything inside of it is um, students. We have students filming. Um, students taking pictures, so you will see a really good view of what we do and um, how we uh, do life, lifetime life um, style uh, programming here at COD. So welcome, enjoy the show, and um, uh, make sure at the very end you let the people who ran the show give them a round of applause. So enjoy the show. Thanks. Just one minute. Oh, okay. I want... I want Eva to stand right here for okay. a second. All right, so before we begin, I just want to say good evening. I'm Lisa Stock. I'm the Assistant Provost of Instruction here at College of DuPage, and I want to take a moment to acknowledge and honor our amazing Eva Stevens. Oh. This will be her last COD fashion show, which makes us all really sad. Um, I was lucky enough to meet uh, Eva during a new faculty institute about five years ago, and she has proven to be an amazing mentor and resource for our students. Eva's teaching philosophy is rooted in creating spaces that allow students to grow creatively while owning their passion for the fashion industry. I'd just like to share one student comment with you that really shows her impact. Eva is genuinely invested in students and their success. I've lost count of how many times I've stepped in her office unannounced just to ask her career advice or feedback on an assignment, and she's given me more information and help than I even knew that I was asking for. She is always, she was always there and giving you ways to improve. She improves the department, and she is the heart of the whole fashion um, program. In my personal journey, I like to say the reason I started at COD was for my love of fashion, and one of the reasons I stayed is for Eva. She is the heart of everything we do, and she has been a huge blessing to me personally, and I know she's been that to many others. And I'd just like to say that we feel that Eva has transformed our fashion studies program, and we are genuinely thankful for you. So let's please give Eva a grand <laughs> applause. All right. So, so I would just like to wish everyone great luck on the fashion show, and I'm excited to see all of the work that students have done. Great. All right. Thank you. I'll take it. All right. Thank you. I know this is a student-run show. What exactly does that mean? Students will design, produce, run, and execute the fashion show. They think of lighting, of music. The promotion students will do everything from social media to ticket sales and posters and brochures. So everything that anybody sees today will be their work. What are the main steps in designing and creating a garment for the fashion show? The students started designing um, and thinking about their collection uh, even before the semester started. Uh, we met during spring break, um, we brainstormed some concepts. So at the beginning of the semester they already had some ideas of what they wanted to work on. So as far as the steps, it was uh, first inspiration development and we went into uh, sketching the designs taking a trip to a fabric store, sourcing their fabrics for their designs, and then after that, um, starting to work in muslin. So making their first samples of their, of their garments in muslin, test fabrics, uh, then fittings with models, 
uh, and then after that, after making adjustments, going into fashion fabric. So it's quite a long process. <laughs> So we do a model call and it's a school-wide call and it also includes our social media feeds. So sometimes we get wannabe models who are friends of ours or who are part of our social media. We put out a call early in the semester and uh, end up with models for the fashion show. This year we have over 60 models. So they practice their runway uh, walks, turns, go through countless fittings with your students, uh, making sure all the garments look as best as they can. So it's a lot of fun and a lot of work. Yeah, I definitely feel the energy in the department when they're working on the model casting. Where does the inspiration for the students' garments come from? As an instructor, I, this is the part that's the most fun for me. Um, I really enjoy seeing students come up with uh, their inspiration. It's a very personal thing, and I think that's what's so exciting about it. They really sort of kind of dig deep and kind of really figure out like what is it that inspires me in my work and um, so then they start pulling visuals. Uh, they first start with images and maybe it goes into working with fabric on the form and I, I think what's exciting about it is just how organic the process is. It's just really kind of exploring, experimenting and um, it, you know, it, what I've always found is that students just discover something new about themselves and where they want to go and what they want to be as a designer. How many outfits are students required to make for the show? We start with a lot of ideas, now we're down to six, and um, sort of the idea is that they're gonna work on the construction of their garments, but not necessarily all six will work. And so that really gives students the opportunity to kind of pick and choose uh, the things that are gonna work the best, that's gonna have the outcome that they're looking for. And so I think that flexibility really kind of helps ease the anxiety for some of the students of making everything perfect, because it's not how it actually works. There's always gonna be something that doesn't work. Um, but ultimately, we'd like to, them for, to develop at least four outfits for the fashion show. Whose garments are we going to be seeing in the show? Every making class has to produce garments, and those students are allowed to put their garments in the show. Um, if they are good enough, most of them are. But so the audience might see like 10 of the same dress because 10 students all had to make that dress. Um, it'll have different uh, details on it, it'll be in different colors, and it'll fit entirely different depending on how the student made it. So we have um, embellishment and draping classes, uh, two pattern drafting classes, um, and two clothing construction classes. So there will be um, a making class in between each design studio section. And I think that's what's really exciting about that um, type of format for the show is you, I think the audience really gets a sense of how our students have developed their skills over time, really seeing from their first level construction courses to their capstone design class. And yeah, it's really exciting to see that development. What are the important skills and experiences students will take away from this class? In terms of skills and experiences, I think you can kind of look at it in sort of like two, two ways. The first is the creative side of it. Um, I think the program and the, and the class really encourages students to be as creative as they can, really taking their ideas and developing it. You know, as far as the technical, it's having, making sure the students have the skills that's going to be required in the industry. So, um, you know, learning those skills and practice. It's, it's really all about practice. It, you know, they're not going to necessarily learn everything all at once and do it right all at once, but just um, repetition and just really kind of finding what they like to do and practicing that. Uh, who should we be thanking uh, for the show? There are so many people to thank. So different divisions or departments within our division. So um, cosmetology, culinary, um, MPTV, photography, graphic design. Um, but then we also have um, the school backing. So we have conference and events. That team does an incredible job working with us to make our show venue exactly the way we want. We have facilities that bends over backwards to make sure we get everything set up in a very short window of time. It really does take a lot of people to create this show. I'm really thankful that everyone participates and we're so well supported. 
um, because this is not an easy endeavor for just students to put together. Um, so you do need a school backing behind you and um, we have that.
I would say my first memory would be when I was in sixth grade, sixth or seventh grade, and I made like a little denim purse. Um, my grandpa bought me this mini sewing machine and I just wanted to make something and I made a denim purse. I literally just sewed two rectangles together. I guess I would say I kind of inspired myself only because um, it's like really hard for me to find clothes that fit. I'm four foot nine, I'm 86 pounds. So I have to like shop in the kids section a lot to find just like basic jeans that fit me. But I wanted to buy clothes that's for like women. Um, so that's why I want to make petite clothes for women. I like the creativity of it. You can just be free with it and basically create a collection out of anything. I started my creative process by mind mapping. It's like a technique where you come up with three basic words and then you just add on other words to those basic words. Um, and that's how you like narrow things down to come up like with the actual collection. The process of turning the sketch into the actual garment because it never turns out exactly how you imagined it. I would say just be patient because um, when I first started I was very discouraged because my sewing wasn't up to par like other students, um, but I realized it, it literally just takes time, like it's a process.
So my first fashion memory, uh, it was when I was a kid. I used to see my uh, grandma sewing dresses for little girls. What inspired me to choose fashion career was my grandma also, and also my mom because I like the way she wear colors and prints and that inspired me. When I came here to the US, I wasn't uh, interested before. I, I worked like an environmental engineer for 10 years in Colombia. And uh, when I came here, I had the opportunity to, to explore more about that and I decided to take some classes and know more about this and I was in love with fashion. The way I start the process for, the creative process for this project, I just choose what I am interested in and I match or I take details from everything. My inspiration was Yves Saint Laurent, the designer, and nature was the inspiration for this collection. It's inspired by outfits from 66 and 69. I took from those uh, designs little details like pockets, collars, and I just um, used them with uh, shapes from images that I was interested. One of the images, the, uh, it has texture. I love texture in my designs, so I combine all of those, also colors and prints. So I love all of those things together. My favorite uh, piece is the outfit with the jacket and the trousers. The hardest part for this process, it was the creative part. So I have many ideas, but sometimes I don't know how to organize those ideas because I can start sketching without mood boards or pictures. So this is, this is the hard part for me. In the future, I will remember this class like a fun class, interesting class, a learning process because all of this is new for me.
first fashion memory is taking sewing classes at Joann's. The first thing I made was a pillow and I hand stitched that. And then after that, I continued to take classes. My family inspired me to continue pursuing fashion as a career. During quarantine, I picked up sewing again and I was studying athletic training. So I stopped and then I realized that I wanted to continue pursuing fashion, so I came to fashion school. I like studying fashion because it helps me take my ideas and put it on paper and also into fabric, so. I started the process by looking up things that I wanted to pursue and research. So I started with the ocean and then I went to sea animals and I stuck with the jellyfish. My inspiration was jellyfish and their tentacles and their like arms that they have. So it was a lot of elements I could take from there and put into my garments. I'm most excited to see my cage dress finished. My hardest part was deciding and being sure with the colors and every single garment because I had a lot of ideas and I had to dwindle it down to just a few. My biggest challenge so far is trying to find fabrics that match my color story. I think I'll remember this class in the future as my first collection and I'll be able to see the growth that I had from my first piece to where I am at that point. I would tell incumbent fashion students to ask questions, get involved, and to love what they do. first fashion memory, it really stems all the way back from my childhood. Uh, growing up, my dad uh, sewed together 
every single Halloween costume because we always want it to be some sort of fantasy movie inspired or video game inspired uh, character and they just didn't exist in the Walmart department section so my dad put together all of our costumes and that's kind of what really got me into costuming and I guess what now leads me to being here and being in, in fashion. Was there an event that made me choose fashion school? Honestly, yes. It really was the pandemic. I was kind of having, it happened, I was kind of having a crisis. I was 25, I hadn't finished school. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up and I had no ambition. I had nothing going for me. And that's when I was able to start actually sewing a lot more for myself. And I realized I should go back to school and I should actually finish my degree. And so my husband helped me find schools and I ended up finding um, College of DuPage. And with their online classes in the beginning, it really helped be able to kickstart the re finishing my school. And now I will officially finally be able to graduate this semester. What do I like about studying fashion? What is there not to like? I really, I enjoy every single class. I enjoy every aspect of it. My absolute favorite is garment construction. I love sewing. I do it eight to 10 hours a day, every single day of the week. So I, I can't get enough. My collection is inspired by historical fantasy. It's got a lot of historical elements, a lot of historical ways of sewing and constructing pieces with corsetry and base garments and sutash braid, which is a Russian uh, element that they would have used back in the early 1800s, along with smocking, which was very common in the 17th century because it helped with being able to make things multiple sizes. And the fantasy, I've always just been a huge nerd. I've always been drawn to the fantasy world. And so I wanted to create a collection for all of the badass women who want to be confident and comfortable in their own skin and show a little, but be just, just, yeah, just be very, very cool. <laughs> My biggest inspiration to move towards fashion as a career would definitely be my husband. He brought me to my first Renaissance Fair 10 years ago, and the second I walked through those gates, I knew I didn't know what I needed to do, but I needed to do this, all of this, for the rest of my life. And starting right then, I started uh, making my own garments for the Renaissance Fair, and pieces for my husband, and pieces for our friends. And then my husband was encouraging me, saying I should sell them, and they're great, and you should do it. And I was just, I wasn't very confident in my skills. I didn't think I could do that, but I am successfully, uh, two years, coming up on two years of successfully running a Renaissance Fair sewing clothing business and I have partnerships across the um, over out in Pennsylvania and last year I actually got to travel the entire U.S. to Renaissance Fairs all over and it's very exciting and that would not have happened without him. <laughs>
a spot is to be able to carry cameras and sensors and just as much as we can get into areas that we'd rather people not spend a lot of time. That could be areas that are radioactive, have contamination dust. We don't want people going there. Send your robot. Well, we would like to protect our robot. So particularly with dust and radioactive contamination dust, we don't want that getting into sensitive parts of the robot where we can't clean it out and it just becomes a, a mess. We ended up reaching out to COD because uh, our group leader, Mei Ling, already had a, a working relationship with COD, had worked with the students, and we figured if we want to protect our robot with personal protective equipment, we should talk to experts in the field that know how to do this properly. And it's a lot of fun working with students. They bring a creativity and uh, just an energy to, to jobs that make it just a a joy to work with them. Our uh, protective equipment, we had like prototypes and we were working off of basically like a box. But now that we have the actual robot here, it's really great to be able to see how we can put it on and how we can fit it and see where everything lands. Or I never thought we would ever work on a robot. It's uh, not what you come to fashion school for typically, but um, it's been an amazing experience. Um, so we just fit the back side, we're going to flip him over and attach it, and then hopefully we can see if it stays on him as he moves. No, never thought uh, Fashion Studies and Fermi Lab would be partners. Um, it was such a unique opportunity, so we jumped on it, um, and I was so thankful that they reached out to us. You know, fashion design students don't always end up designing fashion, they design other things. Um, and so this is a window into that, that knowledge of how to design and problem solve can be applied really to anything. And so we really do teach design, we apply it to fashion, but it really can be applied to anything. And now they have more opportunities, other things that they can look at and possibly design for.
first fashion memory is getting my first leather jacket. The first garment I made was a pair of pajama pants in eighth grade. I've always liked fashion, just dressing up and buying clothes, but I discovered my first Rick Owens show in freshman year of high school, so I wanted to pursue fashion as a career. Uh, the event that made me choose fashion school is graduating high school and deciding what to do with my life. The thing I like about uh, studying in fashion is how hard it is. In the beginning, I thought it was going to be easy, easy, but it just increasingly got even harder. My creative process and my inspiration was going through all the vinyl that I collect and just picking records and basing the collection off those records I chose. My, collec my collection is based on oversized garments and the color black. And my favorite piece in the collection is a oversized wool overcoat. The thing I'm most excited to see finish is the wool overcoat. The hardest part of developing the collection was actually sitting down and uh, developing the patterns for it. The biggest challenge so far is um, finding the correct fabrics I wanted to use and the cost of those fabrics. I think I remember it. I will remember the class fondly. I would tell the incoming students to take your time and slow down and not to rush any projects and don't compare yourselves to any of the other students.
My first memory of fashion would have to be um, my mom's closet. I remember that she used to have these knee-high snakeskin boots and they were just so bold and sleek and she would always ask my opinion on what she should wear on like her nights out and I would always say snakeskin boots. I've always sort of been into fashion since I was younger. I was sort of always drawn to finding my own personal style. I remember when I was taking a tour of COD, I stumbled upon the fashion hallway and I just remember like getting chills like up and down my body because I was just like this really like, I didn't know that like I could possibly do fashion as a career. So I just knew that it felt right. What I like about studying fashion is that I am able to share my vision um, with the world and it's really important to me but it also can speak to so many different audiences and make them feel a certain way when they see the clothing that I'm producing. I started the creative process pretty early on. I found a bunch of fabrics that I really liked, um, that I knew that I wanted in my collection. I am most excited to see my whole collection finished. Um, I feel like you really get a good sense of the story once you see them all lined up together. So I'm just excited to see all of my pieces go down the runway. I will always remember this class. Um, it's hard not to. I feel like all of the skills that I've gathered from this class speak to all areas of my life, not just um, creatively. So I'll definitely take everything that I'm learning from this class with me into my everyday life in the future.
inspired to go into fashion because I used to do, like from doing my costumes back years ago, I started to get into like cosplay and making my own like props and costumes and doing and dressing up as characters. And it was really fun and turns out I was really good at sewing. What I like about studying fashion is that I love to work with my hands and I love to make things and that's what I really love to do. I just love seeing the process from like start to finish, just the whole, everything about it. For my collection, my inspiration was, I looked at a lot of protective suits and armor, and I also pulled references from like post-apocalyptic type games and medias. I was looking at bomb suit, diving suits, and medieval armor too, to pull into my collection. I wanted my collection to be like very protective, and I wanted it to have these very big oversized pieces that basically almost engulfed the wearer. My favorite piece of the collection would probably have to be the big coat that I'm working on. It's, it goes like all the way from up here and it's almost down to the feet. And it just is a huge coat that almost engulfs the person that it's wearing. It's gonna be really cool. So the biggest challenge for this collection is probably to finish the whole thing, to get all of my little pieces sewn together and on the garment, because I have a lot of quilting, I have some details that I want to get in there, and I am hoping to be able to get as much as I can together. I will definitely remember this class. I think I will remember it fondly, because it's definitely like a big challenge to do a whole collection, but I think it really is a learning process because I'm think, I think I'm gonna be able to learn so much from this and I'm gonna be able to take so much away. I'm very excited. I would tell incoming students to start as early as you can. Start gathering your ideas and writing down your concept as soon as possible because it takes such a long time to just narrow down and decide what you want to go with. And it's also good to know exactly what you want to do going into the class so you can just get started and just get rolling right away. cared about sustainability and I honestly still think about that today um, it's definitely shaped my whole kind of care about what I want to do in the future and that's why I'm minoring in sustainability and I really still think about that comment like a lot it honestly really is important to me and it's really just helped me become more confident in what I want to do in the future and that's one thing about Eva is that she listens and she cares even if we're in class talking about God knows what, like, even if it doesn't really have to do with the subject matter, she just is there and listens, and that's so hard to come by, and I really just appreciate everything she's done for the department, and she just listens, and I think that's so important, especially for teachers and students, is I feel like a lot of students feel like teachers don't really listen to them, 
and I'm so glad to have had Eva listen to anything I have to say, honestly. Um, she's so, she's just the best. I couldn't have asked for a better Eva and I'm so sad to see her go, but I'm so, I just wish you the best in the future and I know you're gonna be doing amazing things and I don't know, I just wish you the best and I just wanna say thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. I honestly, that comment, I think about it all the time and I just wanna say thank you and we love you. Bye Eva, happy retirement. I'll miss you the most. I just wanna say thank you for all of your help and guidance through the years. I've had a lot of fun here in the fashion department and I just wanna say thank you for that. I've had so much fun working on the spot project and that was like such an awesome experience and I hope you have a very happy retirement. Hi Ava. Um, I know we haven't really had much interaction together, um, but I am gonna miss seeing you. Um, you're very sophisticated, very smart, intelligent. Um, I wish you all the best. <laughs> Goodbye, Ava. It was so nice knowing you through like just the one and a half semesters that I got to know you or get closer to you. You've been an amazing boss, very understanding, and I wish you the best in your retirement. Bye, Eva. Happy retirement. It was awesome having you in the fashion department. Hey, Eva. Happy retirement. I hope you have the best, best time. And thank you so much for being an awesome, like, helper and advocate and absolutely everything. You do the most for us. So thank you. Have a great retirement. Eva, thank you so much for your kind words. Um, even though I was in the greatest but I really appreciate you being like, hey, you need to get this done like on me, but in the kindest way. I wish you the best. Um, I wish I had more semesters with you, but whatever I had, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Eva. Um, <laughs> uh, obviously, you know me, um, I'm Dina, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for everything you've done for me my past two years here. Um, without you, I really wouldn't have figured out where I belong in the industry or in the department. Um, so thank you for pushing me to always do more for myself and strive to achieve more. We won't be the same without you. Damn, I have to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Eva, it's Sarah. Um, I've only been here a year. Thank you so much for all of the guidance that you've shown me. I was so happy to you know, be a judge alongside of you for the FCCLA competitions and to get to talk to you about what it was like being on the other side of that and to, you know, Get to see all those kids look so happy and see what we were judging and it was just such a great experience and i'm so happy that i got to have you as my freshman promotions teacher for your last year and i'm gonna miss you so much if you're leaving we're all leaving we're all going <laughs> <laughs> we love you we love you so much bye bye eva good luck with everything and have a good retirement we'll all miss you so much Hi Eva, I know we've only known each other for like a year or so, but I just want to say thank you so much for being here with me and being here with all of us and just thank you for being an amazing professor and a fashion head and you've done such amazing work and made us all feel included and you definitely made me feel included in my first year here and I just want to say good luck to you and thank you so much. From this semester, Eva has shared her knowledge of fashion with us in incredible ways. Bye, Eva. Bye, Eva. Thank you so much for everything. Hi, Eva. Thank you so much for everything you've done for our department. I wish I got to spend more time with you, and thank you for helping me figure out classes and what to do with my life. You're the best, and good luck. Hi, Eva. It's Katya. I just want to give you a huge congratulations on retiring and a big thank you for always being super kind and funny and always being available especially that you're able to help me um just schedule down the future classes i needed to take in order to transfer and that was a huge help when i was lost in doing that and you're just always so kind and like helpful to uh, to others and i just there's no one that can replace you We're gonna miss you a lot. I really appreciate, I wrote this down in the note card too, but I really appreciate how I'm never afraid to talk to you and you're super empathetic and understanding whenever something goes wrong. So you've been the best. I'm gonna continue to email you about Photoshop questions for the next 10 years. Hi. Eva, I am so grateful to you for this opportunity. 
I look for a home here at CLD and you always welcome me with open arms. Um, I am absolutely excited to be a part of this wonderful show. You are fabulous. Thank you. Words cannot express how grateful I am to you. I love you. And that's all I can say. Bye, Eva. Have a good retirement. We'll miss you. Hi, Eva. Just wanted to say thank you so much for everything that you've taught me these past two years. I feel like there hasn't been a question that I came to you with that I didn't come back with an answer for, um, which is great. Um, I feel so bad for this apartment that they're losing not one, but two of us um, this year. What are they going to do without us? <laughs> Um, no, seriously, thank you so much. You have been the best professor that I have ever had, um, and we are going to miss you so much. Hi, Hi Eva. Eva! Happy retirement. Thank you for giving me opportunities about the fashion industry, and happy retirement. Um, thank you for always being so supportive of us and giving us more opportunities. Thank you, Eva, for all the chances you gave us and opportunities and always giving us knowledge every Thank you so much for everything you have taught us more than any other teacher has ever taught me and I'm probably speaking on behalf of everyone than any of us. You are a phenomenal human being aside from just being an amazing teacher and professor and program director and all of these different kinds of things, all the hats that you juggle all the time, you do it with such grace, you never make anyone feel like you're getting in the way or that you're under too much pressure or stress and that is a trait that barely anyone has and on top of that, your wit, your intelligence on every subject matter, not just fashion, and the way you connect the dots across the world from fashion and you pull other subject matters in for us, and then the way you make us think about the, fashion, the impact of fashion on the world, ethics-wise, sustainability, all these different kinds of things. You have changed everyone's life in the fashion department. And honestly, every time we're in the fashion department and you walk by, it doesn't matter who I'm sitting with, everyone goes, she's the best. She's amazing. She's a beast. Everyone just says phenomenal things about you, like whispers it, like, hello, superhero. So you're basically cooler than Batman, obviously. You're the best. We love you so, 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 so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Love you love you. Hey, Ava.
final words like I have any left. <laughs> um, I, I'm speechless. I have to say I'm just speechless. Um, this department is such an incredible group of people, um, the faculty, the students. Um, I have nothing more to say besides thank you all for making my life so wonderful. Every time I walked in the door, every time I walked into my office, it was wonderful. So thank you. Thanks for taking this little extra effort. I really appreciate it. And I hope you all enjoyed the show. Thanks for having to sit through this. But um, it was my honor to teach here. And so here we go. Thank <laughs> you.